Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of the Aston Rebels Coach's Corner as we come to you live from the Iceworks Pub and Grill. Once again, I have with me uh, head coach uh, Joe Coombs. Joe, thanks so much for sticking around and uh, heading on. Thanks, Tom. Well, congratulations on the series win after coming away with a 6-1 to one win against the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Knights. A uh, very convincing effort in uh, uh, for pretty much a good 60 minutes. Saturday? Yeah. Well, yeah. On, on Friday, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I thought we were pretty good the whole time. Uh, you know, I really thought we probably only really one period was – not so good in a couple minutes of another. Another night, I, I thought we were pretty good, you know. So we're uh, we're happy uh, that we're surely happy the direction we're going. Yeah, scoreless after the first period. Uh, Andrew Bellant and Frank Spellman made a two to nothing. Later in the period, Austin Swingle made a three nothing on a really nice patient move in front of the cage. Good to see him get on the board. Swingle's a kind of a captain who is a lead by example kind of guy. Yeah, he. Uh, I thought he played really well. I, you know, I, I thought that uh, the fact the gentleman coming on next. Uh, I thought um, Evgeny and, and, and um, Austin were our two best forwards and trying at one point to mix them up and, and, and get a couple other guys going and instead just stuck the course and, and um, they were both pretty good. So um, Austin uh, found a way. It was probably, I don't know, maybe the nicest goal he's ever scored in three years of junior maybe. <laughs> but, uh, well, he's we were, shown we were, those hands before, uh, but yeah, this time we were, he's we were happy finish. that he got it, that's for sure. No. Well deserving, that's for sure. Now the Knights get on the board. Bellant picks up his second of the game to make it 4-1. to one. Again, this all happened within a span of about a minute or so late in the second period. And that kind of seemed to demoralize the Knights, and you guys took over from there, just kind of coasted. Or at least it seemed from what well, I was sitting. Well, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, I'd like to think anyway that, you know, I, they're, they're surely a young team, and, and they're up and coming, and, you know, they got some really nice pieces on that team. But, you know, I, I'd have to think that they were – in the back of their minds, you know, after we were up 2 nothing, that I think for how young they were over there and, you know, they were probably thinking, hey, we're not going to beat this team three games in a row, you know, three games in a row, and they would have had to have done that to, to win the series. And I think once that fourth goal came in, I think that really popped into their heads because they they played us hard uh, all year, certainly um, games one and two, um, you know, but uh, but game three, it was, uh, I thought we, you know, rough first Eight to twelve minutes, and then after that, I, I sort of felt we we were we were the much better team the rest of the way. Was that a case of being on the road, just kind of settling things down at the beginning of the game, and just getting your legs underneath I, you? You know, I, I think so. I, I, we we haven't played well there. Um, even though I didn't think we played great the first eight to twelve minutes, I surely think that it was the best eight to twelve minutes we played there in a long time. <laughs> um, and then after that, when we settled in, I thought Andrew Ballin. I was a little worried about Andrew uh, out of the gate. He hadn't played in three weeks. He um, he hadn't played the weekend before just due to an injury, and, and I thought his timing would be a little off. But, you know, once he got going and once he got started, he, um, you know, obviously missing Ryan Kuzman, um, you know, Friday night with, uh, the, you know, he had a death in his family and, and had to go home and be with them, which is where he needed to be. But, you know, I thought missing him, we needed somebody to step up, and I really thought between Andrew and Yak and, and, um, and uh, Austin, I thought they did that. So it was really nice to see. Just to give credit out, Dean Balsamo picks up the empty netter. Ryan Solomon, a late goal, a blast from the point. As Again, you guys didn't really push forward throughout most of that third period, but you, you didn't exactly stay back as well. It was kind of a, I wouldn't say a pre vet but certainly a, you, know, you guys weren't throwing three guys forward on the four check. No, uh, you know, you know that's something that you want to you want to try and do anytime you have the lead is continue to play the way you're playing and you know make sure that pucks are going into the right areas and and to continue to I call it play forward and and um, you know not sit back and, and and continue to do what we do and and uh, we certainly continue to do that in the third period and and um, you know continue to chip away at um, you know moving forward. So I, I thought overall I thought the entire series other than oh well. Would we play 61 to 180 minutes? I thought about 140, 145 minutes of it, that, of it we were pretty good. So certainly, um, you know, in the playoffs where there's a lot of momentum swings and stuff like that, that uh, that we were surely the better team. Now, you guys played Wilkes-Barre Scranton 19 times, 16 regular season and three in the playoffs. When you play a team that often, there are two ways it could go. You can go to hate each other so much that it just get, goes out of hand, or you, there's, you build up so much in the way of respect, and it's kind of like you both back off on each other and just concentrate on the hockey, and that seems the way it kind of was. Usually in a playoff, you get some serious hate going on. You know, the intensity picks up. It never really seemed to pick up in this series, probably because you guys 
got off in such a strong start. You, you know what? I, I, I was a little shocked, too, that it didn't. Um, you know, I, I certainly think that we were prepared for, for any of it. Um, you know, I, I thought the game, we didn't get it off to a good start. We were down 2 nothing. I I thought that that next. That was game know, two, right? Yeah, game two. I, I sort of felt like, you know, they came out storming, and I think it was a huge wake-up call to us. Um, you know, and then I thought we really got going after that, that, that we the players knew, you know. Um, you know, it was, uh, I know we scored them in three minutes, but that intensity for that period of time is something that, you know, we need to find consistently. Um, you know, I think some of it, too, has to do with, with the environment. Um, I'm certainly not complaining, but, um, you know, you look at some of these other places, or I guess maybe I've just been watching too much NHL, but, um, you know, that environment is, is a lot to play in, and it's part of the experience. And, you know, neither place is, is has, um, you know, that, that environment where, you know, it's there's seats all around you, and, you know, the place is packed with, you know, um, so there, it's a little bit different. We're certainly going to experience that moving forward, um, you know, in, in the Johnstown series. And, you know, they have hockey there a long time, and it's an old building, and, you know, they, they're packing, you know, they'll probably have 2,500 people in there would be my guess. And the environment's going to be uh, playoff for sure. So, you know, they're going to get there one way or the other. Well, it starts off this weekend here at home, games one and two. Guys, go out there and get your tickets, and let's create some of that uh, atmosphere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, please, yeah. Yeah, two for one. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have our player spotlight. We'll talk to Christopher Spindoulis and Evgeny Yakovlev. And, again, that's coming up in just a couple minutes as you're watching the Aston Rebels Coach's Corner. All saves by an Aston Rebels goaltender are brought to you by the Mike Costanzo Farmers Insurance Agency, where he can save you money on auto and home insurance. Just go to FarmersAgent.com slash mcostanzo. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. Are you hungry? Check out the Aston Pizza Company at 600 Convent Road in Aston for great pizza, cheese steaks, hoagies, wings, sandwiches, stromboli, calzones and more call 610-558-9292 for delivery or visit astonpizzacompany.com the dragon box is a smart tv box that streams in hd with no monthly fees or contracts it will give you access to thousands of movies tv live sports boxing ufc events and 3d movies all in hd visit www.thedragonbox.com today Choice Clean Gear is the professional choice for cleaning of all types and brands of sports equipment. We use a patented, fully engineered cleaning system in our state-of-the-art facility that completely washes and sanitizes without damaging equipment like many front-loading wash systems. Best of all, we guarantee to have your equipment cleaned and on the way back to you in less than 72 hours. Visit CleanHockeyGear.com today for more information. Welcome back, everybody. Once again, we are here for the Aston Rebels Coaches Corner. This is the Player Spotlight, and we have Christopher Spindoulis and Evgeny Yakovlev. Guys, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks, Tony. Yeah, thanks. We'll start with uh, Christopher Spindoulis, 20 years old, from Riga, Latvia. You played your early junior career at Riga, and that's a pretty much a, a hockey hotbed around the, around the world. I mean, I remember growing up, uh, you know, I grew up a little before you guys did, uh, D Dinamo Riga was a big team there, and it actually it is now in the KHL yeah. as well. But did you guys, uh, did you miss out on that as far as, because uh, yeah, I know I the two guys disappeared yeah, for a while. No Dinamo Riga. I'm the only new one who's playing in the KHL right now. Uh, obviously, my coach uh, was from Dinamo Riga, old one. So he was really coach for me. He taught me a lot. Now, give us an idea of the difference, if you, if you know of the difference between how hockey is kind of 
approached there as a player, as a young player, compared to here? I mean, you guys have seen the young guys getting taught around here. Yeah. What What was it like as a, as a kid? Uh, I think it was more passing, more passing and thinking game, not not so much running. Now, you've had a chance to represent your country over the past few years, so it has to be a massive honor to uh, represent Latvia. Yeah, yeah, it's been an honor for uh, your own country colors and, and uh, play for country and represent the country. And you won, a bron you won a bronze medal a couple of years ago at the uh, Division One World Juniors, correct? Yeah, that was last year. Okay. That was, that was so a good tournament in Ita Italy. Now, you come to the U.S., you start off with the Sioux Eagles here in the NAHL. We talk a lot about the uh, to a lot of the guys. What's the difference between, say, playing in the Midwest to playing here? Now you you have the opportunity to go from Latvia to yeah. the United States, and you said the big difference being taught was a lot more passing yeah. there. Here, what is the big thing that you you step back and go, wow, this is a little different than what I'm used to? I was a lot of physical game, like a lot. <laughs> Every game was a couple of bruises on my shoulders, but otherwise it's a good hockey here, uh, really fast and. Uh, I like it. And the size of the rink is completely different of as well. Yeah, it's smaller. Now, you split time last year between the Sioux Eagles and the Des Moines Buccaneers of the USHL. Give me one difference between the NAHL and the USHL. Uh, smart. Smart? I would say smarter players. The, the, smarter the players. smarter players in the NA or? Oh, in USHL. Oh, okay, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, uh, North American Hockey League is, uh, is growing. Mm -hmm. The past three years I played here, and uh, I like it. Now, you got drafted by the Aston Rebels first round of this year's draft. Breakout year. Ten goals, 46, uh, 46 points, which was second in the league among defensemen. What is the big thing that has changed in your game from last year with Sue and in the USHL to here with Aston that um, has increased your numbers? I start playing more often. After the USHL, I learned some uh, good skills in the offensive zone, and uh, I was using this uh, this year. And... Um, Obviously, a great team in here in Austin, and great coaching staff, and they helped me a lot. So, wouldn't 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 do that without them. Well, you made your commitment to Lake Superior State. Yeah. What made you? What what was the deciding factor? Uh, like I said, I play in Sioux up in a Sioux, Michigan, and uh, obviously I know some people. Uh, I made some friends uh, past uh, two years, and uh, I like the school, I like the city, and uh, that's that was my decision. Well, I'm happy with it. well, congratulations! That that's that's awesome. Yeah. Again, that's one of the main points of the NHL. Is right. to try to get guys to move on, and you're, you're a, a success story. Yeah, uh, Evgeny, 19 years old, yeah. from uh, Belgorod, Russia. Two solid seasons in Zelenograd. Give us an idea of your experience as the as far as the coaching difference uh, yeah, between Joe Coombs here in the United States and your coaching in Russia. <laughs> and remember, uh, he's still like, he's still around listening. Yeah, like I feel like I can't describe my coach, but I, I like my coach, like Joe Coombs. Uh, I think he's a nice like person. And He's so smart, like a coach. So I don't know. Like uh, I, I didn't see like big difference, like between my coach and back in Russia and here. So I think they're good coaches. So whatever. Now this is your first season in North America. How do you think you've handled things different from Russia and to the to the United States? Not only in hockey, but kind of culturally as well. Oh, it was so hard. Like uh, my first month here, I was like uh, stressed because. Like we have big difference, like between Russia and uh, America. So I don't know, like we have different size of uh, skate rink, and uh, like uh, we, I have to be more physical here, like more hits and something something like that. So uh, I don't know, it was hard, but now uh, like I spent eight months here, and I'm doing great. So well, and both of you guys are handling the language. Uh very well again that must have been one of the <laughs> challenges as well going wait a second what, what what gibberish are these americans talking now it's you guys are pretty much on board and so far this at least in this interview and i've talked to you guys before you guys have done a you know a bang up job on that i gotta yeah. tell you that a lot of americans probably would not do as well <laughs> to be honest with you um this year with the rebels um you've had another you've had a breakout year as well 13 goals 29 points and talking about those differences you seem to have handled those differences very well yeah, but... Oh, he's kind of like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know, like, I know, like, uh, I got 29 points, but I can't, um, like, uh, whatever. Uh, can he translate? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Say that I'm going to go more, and, like, I know that I can do more, and he will do more, and... Yeah, like... He'll work on it. 
Yeah, yeah a little girl, guy. like a uh, hockey player. So. Yeah. Well, and, and again, you guys within the team concept, yeah. both both of you guys have done a, a great job of staying within that and increasing your own personal numbers. Congratulations on a great regular season. You guys have gotten through one playoff round. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Looking forward to Johnstown. Yeah. Looking forward yeah, to playing those guys. Yeah. Playing like really physical, so yeah. we'll have a lot of work against them. And yeah. yeah. Well, well, always to go to the next round. So. Uh, that's well. That's all. Like they always say, stay within the system. Take it one shift at a time, and everything will yeah, work out just right. Yeah. Uh, guys, thanks so much for joining us. It's Chris Bindulis and Evgeny Yakovlev. Uh, yeah. When we come back, we'll have uh, Joe Coombs. We'll have him come back and uh, wrap things up and take a look forward to the next series against Johnstown. You're watching the Aston Rebels Coach's Corner. Since 1984, Delaware Express has offered full-service ground transportation services for business and leisure travel via airport shuttle, town car, motor coach, van, sedan, and limousine. A member of the Go Airport Shuttle Network with more than 100 dedicated drivers supported by professional dispatch, safety, customer service, and maintenance teams. Delaware Express has grown to be the largest and most trusted ground transportation provider in the area. Visit www.delexpress.com for more information. Citizens Bank delivers a broad range of financial services to over 5 million individuals, companies, not-for-profits, and institutions. Make sure you visit the Aston Giant branch on Concord Road for all of your financial services needs. P&S Ravioli Company are makers of all-natural fine pasta since 1966. It has been voted Best of Philly and Reader's Choice Award winners. P&S has five local locations and is sold in your local supermarket. P&S's featured products include cheese ravioli, spaghetti, cheese cavatelli, jumbo stuffed shells, along with fine sauces to go with your pasta. And P&S ships all of its products in the continental United States. Order online at www.psravioli.com. Visit one of their five local locations or your local supermarket. P&S Ravioli, better than homemade. Mainline Health is the exclusive medical provider for the Aston Rebels. Mainline Health is a regional health system with more than 2,000 board-certified physicians, five of Philadelphia's most respected hospitals, and a wide network of patient care locations. Mainline Health, well ahead. Since 1984, Delaware Express has offered full-service ground transportation services for business and leisure travel via airport shuttle, town car, motor coach, van, sedan, and limousine. A member of the Go Airport Shuttle Network with more than 100 dedicated drivers supported by professional dispatch, safety, customer service, and maintenance teams. Delaware Express has grown to be the largest and most trusted ground transportation provider in the area. Visit www.delexpress.com for more information. All saves by an Aston Rebels goaltender are brought to you by the Mike Costanzo Farmers Insurance Agency, where he can save you money on auto and home insurance. Just go to FarmersAgent.com slash mcostanzo. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the uh, Aston Rebels Coach's Corner. Well, Joe, congratulations on the first round. We move forward. After a series sweep, time to focus on the Johnstown Tomahawks, who are coming off their own three-game sweep for the New Jersey Titans. It's going to be a completely different series. Everyone knows that. Again, we're expecting some pretty physical hockey, and I'm guessing that discipline will be one of the major keys. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's um, all year long... Um, you know, we've uh, the games they've beat us. They beat us twice. They beat us twice. Quite frankly, where they just beat us, um, and then they beat us a, a couple other times. But I quite frankly think we beat ourselves, and it was getting into the uh, the trouble away. F you know, 
extracurricular stuff, activities. Yeah, the extracurricular <laughs> stuff. Um, you know, um, and um, you know, it's just been a. Uh, you know, it, we have to keep our focus. There's just no ifs, ands, and buts about it. And uh, and uh, uh, you know, Stefan causing trouble again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, it, it's it just ha it's a must. It's uh, you know we need to continue to walk away from the trouble. Um, you know, just and, and to keep our focus. There's there's no other way. We we go in, we play between the whistles, we walk away from it. Obviously, we have some big strong guys that aren't afraid. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I think they got. You know they got four or five pretty good players over there, um, th but all of them compete and they all finish their hits. And you know we're a little bit more skilled team. Uh, we don't have quite as many guys that want to play that way, but certainly we have we have enough to um, to I think win. But it's surely going to be different. But it's playoffs, and um, you know we're going to need to be better than we were. And you know we've we've had uh, we had a good day today. Um, you know started off a little slow. Middle was really good and. It ended not so great. We were out there a little while. We were out there 90 minutes today, and um, you know we'll uh, we'll shorten her up here, and we'll uh, we'll get out of here tomorrow and Thursday, and and uh, we'll be ready to go Friday night. Now talking about discipline, it's not as always as simple as just skating away because Johnstown and other teams who play that physical brand, they get in their goal in your goaltender's face, and you want to be able to defend your goaltender, but you have to kind of walk that line. How difficult is that to do? Well, you know. I, I don't think so. Um, from my playing days, it's um, you know you you choose to play like that. You you know, I is it tough to walk away sometimes? Yeah, it is. Especially I mean, whether it be Akalev or, or Andrew Bellant, uh, two guys in particular that just play with a lot of emotion. It's not easy for them to turn the other cheek, and you know it's a little bit different for for Bindelis or you know uh, Mike Marula to, to you know just take it and, and move on. And you know one thing that we always well, I always tell them whether we talk about it or not. It maybe uh, is it hurts, you know, it hurts to lose. You know, yeah, it hurts to get punched in the face, and you know, it's undisciplined to punch people back. But at the end of the day, it's going to hurt them way more for them to, to walk away from this losers than it is from us to, you know, lose some teeth or break some bones or, you know, those who all heal. Um, you know, laugh losing isn't isn't fun, and and um, you know that's something we got to get in our heads. And you know, we talked about it a little bit yesterday morning, and. We'll continue to reiterate it tomorrow and Thursday and, and um, you know, hopefully come out with a big start here Friday night. Now, one negative to talk about from the first round was the power play. Again, well, your pe penalty kill was fantastic because Wilkes Barre Scranton didn't score in the power play either, but three-game series, one of the top power plays in the entire league, just could not get on track. No, no, it couldn't. And as a mag there's um, uh, even just looking for some momentum from it. Um, you know, again, I think it goes back to um, – knowing one another so well um, we did change one of our power plays um, with about five games to go um, the one at the time was clicking along so well that we it's tough to change you know um, but at the end of the day it comes down to executing and it comes down to making the right plays at the right time and you know regardless we have five they have four and, and their work ethic you know no different than ours killing penalties is going to be astronomical and our intensity and emotion um, that we go on the power play with has to has to out, has to be greater than theirs, and and that's not always easy. A lot of guys sometimes get five on four and think, oh, you know, God, we will get a chance here. No, you got to earn your chances, whether it be, you know, five on five or or five on four, and and we surely have to change our mentality going into this, where, you know, yeah, it's been successful, but we got to execute, and um, you know, it's going to be a big part of the next series. That I can assure you. Now we also talked about in the first segment about how home ice will be very important. Important Johnstown. One of the tougher places to play in the entire league, let alone the, uh, the Eastern Division. But you guys have handled that fairly well, and even feeding off that, uh, you know, wow, they're, they're yelling against us. That's fantastic. Let's get into it. And that's kind of the mentality you're probably going to need to have in games three and four, potentially. Well, yeah, we're, we're going to go in there with, you know, there, 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 this should be, uh, oh, you know, I mean, Fairbanks, there's some places in the south, but it's probably going to be one of the most electric buildings that these kids play in in junior hockey, and and that's a good thing, but um, you know it, it, it should help us too. You know it should be exciting to play in front. We played well there uh, last time we were there. We came out of there with two victories. They weren't easy. Uh, both of them were earned. And um, you know we need to continue to find a way and, and again worry about us and and execute what we need to do. And and uh, there's surely going to be some momentum swings. They're they're a big strong physical team. They're going to hem us in at times. And 
we just need to stay patient and understand that those times it's it's our job to get the momentum back and not be too worried about doing too much in the next shift when we, we need momentum back that, that's the way playoffs go and you know there's going to be some swings and this is surely going to be some playoff atmosphere here this friday night well we're certainly looking for looking forward to that coming up games one and two the eastern division finals friday and uh, saturday night here at iceworks both face off 7 p.m get your tickets at astonrebels.com thanks so much for joining us joe and thanks for uh doing this uh, all season long thank you tom i appreciate it. good luck to you as well i understand you're yep. moving on to baseball which i'd rather do hockey any day of the week tom <laughs> but you know that's uh, that's up to you but good luck to you and your family and i wish you well i appreciate it as some of you may know i this will be my last coach's corner for the 2015-16 season I've accepted the director of broadcasting position for the Traverse City Beach Bums up in Michigan. So I'll be reporting to Michigan on Monday. Looking forward to that, although uh, I'll still be on the call for this weekend's game here on Fast Hockey. I will hand over the reins for the coach's corner to my River Sharks broadcasting partner, DJ Mark, who is all the way to our left. DJ, say hello. Hello, everybody watching. So he'll be our guest host uh, next week, and if this series goes game five and... Uh, I think he's going to kick me under the table if it does. If it does go game five, DJ Mark will be on the call on Fast Hockey as well. So DJ will be our guest host next week. He'll be joined by Coach Joan Coombs, and our player spotlight will feature Austin Swingle, so it should be a real good show next week. Now, for all of us here at the Iceworks Pub and Grill, thanks to Evgeny Yakovlev, Christopher Zbindoulis, and, of course, Joe Coombs. Thanks to everyone here at the Iceworks Pub and Grill for setting us up, and thanks to you, the fans, who have joined us all season long. My name is Tom Wilms saying thank you and good night, everybody. Aston Rebels fans. So I told my wife, I'm not taking out the trash. I'm going to the game. Loyal and strong. I told my family to drop the video controllers. We're going to the game. Even defiant. <laughs> I called my boss and told him I was out sick. Join the rebellion with the excitement and family fun of Aston Rebels ice hockey. He shoots. He Get your tickets now at AstonRebels.com and check us out on Facebook. Oh, jeez, my boss is here. Hide me. Aston Rebels Ice Hockey will make a Rebel fan out of you. Proud members of the North American Hockey League. Go to AstonRebels.com.